Hey, it's Paul Soltz from Super Easy Apps. We're playing around with Swift on the command line rather than in Xcode. And previously we set up this app so that we could print out something like hello WWDC. Um, we can go ahead and add an exclamation mark and that's about the max number of characters I can display right now in this terminal um, without getting some funky word wrap. So the two commands that we've been playing with, <clears throat> we saw the Swift build, which will just build, and then the Swift run. Swift run will, will run whatever's here. So we've got our package. Um, this looks like this. And we've got two dependencies, the argument parser and then figlet, which allows us to do that text output. Okay, so if I actually want to run this like a normal tool, like if I type ls, ls is a command that actually runs and it's in my um, sort of executable path. And if I want to do the same thing with this, there is a hidden directory. So typing ls will show us just the non-hidden files, but if I do ls-al, that's going to list everything and we'll see that there's our git ignore file, there's our dot build file and uh, another um, Swift PM folder. So anything that is colored here is gonna be a folder and then non-colored things, these are just flat files. So we can go into that build folder and if I were to type cd.build, we type ls, we're gonna see a lot of things in here. We're gonna have a debug folder, we might have a release folder, there's gonna be some uh, other things in here, repositories where it's putting any of our checkouts and, and stuff like that. And there's also a checkouts folder. Um, so there's a bunch of different things that are going to be in here. But we just want to go into the debug folder. And once we're in here, we'll see even more build products for the tool. And this is actually an executable. This is also an executable. I don't know what this one does, but this is the one that we're building. So to run this, You'd think you could just do this, but that won't work. You actually have to do a dot and then my CLI, so dot slash, and that will actually execute it. That will then complain about the argument. So notice we're no longer typing Swift build or Swift run. We can just run the command. So if I do this with some input, And uh, we want single quotes here, so this doesn't like me. I think it's something's consuming one of the quotes. So let's make sure when we do this, we do a single quote. And there we go. So that's running it. We can also build for release. So let's try that. We're just going to go up a directory and then up another directory. And the swift build command, um, if we look at the help for this, there's a ton of different things that you can do. It's pretty hefty. But there is a command called configuration, and that will allow us be, to choose between either debug or release. So if we do this one more time, we do swift build and then dash C, and then we should be able to say release. And that may or may not need to fetch, depending on if it's the first time that you've done this. And then we can go into that release folder. So cd.build slash release. ls-al cd.build There's something wrong? I don't know why that didn't work. Uh, oh. I think I specified it incorrectly. Um, I put an extra slash in there. So if you're following along, it should be cd.build slash release, not a leading slash. 
what's up here in front. Okay, so once we're in here, again, we can run the tool, uh, but to do it, we still have to do that my CLI with the dot slash. So if we want to make it so that we can actually execute this, we have to install it to somewhere where we're going to have a runnable location, and that's going to be this user local bin. So we can just copy it there. So if I do copy, and I don't know if a plain copy will actually do it, so let's just try that. This is just going to be the name of the tool at the end of this slash. And now if I try my CLI, you're going to see that it actually works. So I didn't need to force at that time, but um, you might need to. So especially if it's like the first time. So doing the force, that's the dash F command for my CLI. It will allow you to copy like the latest version. And if, if you were creating a folder structure, it would also, I think, create that. So here we can overwrite it, say yes. And now we've got the latest version if you've made changes or something like that. If you ever want to remove it, you can just remove the tool. Let's just run it one more time with some input. There we go. So it's working. We don't have to do a dot slash because we've copied it to our bin folder, which is going to be executable. And then if you don't want this version there, you can just remove it. You can force it, or if you don't force it on the remove, it will ask you. So sometimes you want to be careful, and I have a typo here. So let's go back and fix that. If we do this, it's going to ask us, do we actually want to remove it? And we say yes. Uh, and then we're good. So now if you were to try that same thing, it's not going to work until we copy it back. Now the up arrow is going to allow you to go back to a previous commands. Or if you type history, you'll see all of your previous commands. And if there's something that you wanted to re-execute, you can do bang and then the number. So 6341, that will put that on your terminal, press enter, and you can execute it. If you want to learn more about this, um, John Sundell had a blog post that covered a lot of this. Some of this was um, replaced by some of the tutorial that we looked at previously from Apple. So the command line argument parsing has been implemented by Apple as a another thing that we integrated, another dependency that we integrated with, and that's that. So that's his article uh, for working with command line tools. And I hope you learned something. Uh, these are the commands that we covered today, and have a great day. I'll see you later.